Hey everyone and welcome back to another segment of Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're going to discuss a variation of the iron condor, which is called the chicken iron condor. And this was actually created by a viewer, I believe, where they were a little afraid of losing on the max loss, so what they did was bring in their strikes a little closer and collect a larger credit, which inherently it reduces the max loss. And we back tested it and we found that it's actually a very effective strategy. So let's break it down and we'll compare it to the regular iron condor. So when we're looking at a regular iron condor, we're essentially selling a put spread along with selling a call spread. So the put spread is out of the money and that's gonna be below the stock price for puts and the call spread is out of the money as well. And that's going to be above the stock price for calls. Again, with call contracts, it gives the owner the right to buy 100 shares of stock at a certain strike price. So if I sell the right for someone else to sell it above the stock price and then I buy the right to define my risk, that's gonna be considered out of the money because the investor can purchase the stock at a lower price at 100 as you see here. And with put contracts, that gives us the, the owner the right to sell 100 shares of stock. So out of the money is gonna be below the stock price and that's because they're not gonna sell it below 100 when they can just do it in the market for a better price. So a regular iron condor is essentially a short put spread and a short call spread, which is going to be traded for a credit. So we're gonna trade this, we're gonna collect a credit initially, and we're gonna to have to buy back the spread at expiration or before expiration for a lower amount than we sold it for to be profitable. Now, with a normal iron condor, we usually look to collect around one third the width of the strikes. So if we had a $3 wide call spread here and a $3 wide put spread, I would be looking to collect around $1. And we always say one third the width for a normal iron condor simply because we know that that's going to give us essentially about a 70% probability of profit or 70% of being correct on this trade. So we're comfortable with that because it's above 50% and collect one third is pretty much a good amount when we're looking for total credit. So if we have anything like a dollar on a three point wide or close to a dollar 60 for a five point wide spread, anything that's about one third the width is what we're going to be looking for with a regular iron condor. And just like uh, any other iron condor, the max profit's gonna be realized if the stock price is between these short strikes at expiration. Now, if we switch this over to a chicken iron condor, what we're gonna do is bring in the strikes a little bit and we're gonna see that our profit is going to actually be higher. And that's because now we're collecting one half the width of the strike. So with chicken iron condors, we usually looked between 40 to 50% maximum for collection on the width of the spread. We don't wanna go anywhere above 50% and that's because if I know that the, the width of the spread's five points wide and I'm collecting over two dollars and fifty cents that means that my probability of profit is probably going to be below 50 percent and that's not what we want to do when we're selling premium in a strategy like this we always want to keep it above 50 percent so we'll usually look to collect about two dollars and forty cents to two dollars and fifty cents for a five point wide iron condor so with a chicken iron condor as you can see we've brought the strikes in and that's going to increase our total credit so let's say we had a five point wide regular iron condor. If we were collecting one third the width of the strikes, we could probably go farther out just like you see from the stock price and we could collect maybe a dollar sixty, a dollar sixty five and that would give us that same probability of profit of about 70%. However, when I look at a chicken iron condor, if I have the same five point wide spread, so that would mean I have a five point wide call spread and a five point wide put spread, and I can collect $2.50, that's a much higher credit and it's going to give me a bigger profitability if I'm correct. Now, there's a few, few things that we wanna take into account when we're comparing chicken iron condors to regular iron condors. So let's go to the next slide and we'll break it down a little bit further. So when we're talking about regular versus chicken iron condors, like we talked about, the chicken iron condor is going to be narrower strikes, but it's going to give us a higher profitability. And the regular iron condor is gonna be further away strikes, but it's probably gonna give us a bigger probability of profit. So there's always gonna be that trade off there. And as we can see, we've got the higher dollar amount for the chicken iron condor and the lower dollar amount for the normal, just because of the fact that the farther we get away from the strikes, the lower the premium will be in 
and those short options that we're selling, as we know, the highest extrinsic value is in the at the money options. So the further we get away from that, the lower the overall credit's going to be. However, we're creating a much wider uh, zone to be correct, and that's going to give us a higher probability of profit. Now, with a chicken iron condor, like we were talking about, the probability of profit is going to be lower than a normal iron condor. And that's because, like we were talking about with the break-even prices and the strike selection, when we narrow our strikes, we're giving ourselves a smaller margin to be correct. However, we're getting paid more to be correct if we are essentially right. So the probability of profit on a chicken iron condor is usually going to be lower, maybe 50 to 55% when we compare it to a normal iron condor, which will be closer to 65, 70% if we set it up correctly with that one third width strike selection and collecting about one third the widths of the strikes. So with the chicken versus the normal, our max loss is going to be smaller on the chicken compared to the normal iron condor. And that's because the more we collect in terms of the width of the strikes, the lower our max profit's going to be. So again, with the $5 point widespread, if I can collect $2.50 on that and just collect half the width, so that's my maximum amount I'm going to go to, I know that if the stock price blows up to the upside or blows down to the downside, I'm gonna have to either buy back that call spread to the upside for $5 at expiration, which is gonna be its intrinsic value, if both of those options are in the money. Now, if I collected $2.50, it, if I have to buy that back for $5, I know I can use that original credit to offset my max loss. So my max loss is only going to be about $2.50. Just subtracting that credit from the width of the spread. Same thing with the put side. We can take that total credit. If the stock price goes well below our put strikes, I'll have to buy back those put strikes for $5, which is intrinsic value at expiration. But I can use that $2.50 credit to offset that max loss. Now, when we compare that to a normal iron condor, we do have a much wider range, so the probability of this happening, happening is probably gonna be lower, but if the stock price does make a two or three standard deviation move to the upside and I have to buy back my call side, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. So if we have a five point wide call spread on the normal iron condor, but I only collect $1.50, I'll have to buy that back for five points, but I can only use that $1.50 to offset my max loss a little bit. So my max loss would be $350, as opposed to the $250 max loss on the chicken iron condor. And same thing with the put side on the downside. So for that reason, the chicken iron condor I think is great for earnings. So that's my favorite earning strategy. I actually just placed one on the Doe Follow page. I did it in Netflix and that was successful. I tried to get into Amazon and Google for the aftermarket today, but I wasn't able to get filled, so that'll happen sometimes. But I like it as an earning strategy because two things. Number one, if I'm correct and I can capture the expected move with earnings, then I'm going to get paid more than if I were to sell a normal iron condor. And also, when I'm dealing with higher priced underlyings like Amazon and Google, if they do move outside of the expected range, personally, I've seen it move pretty far out of the expected range. So for me, I'd rather cap my max loss and collect a larger credit if I'm wrong or be paid more if I'm right. So for that reason, I also like to use normal iron condors for non-earnings trades. So if I'm just placing a standard iron condor and I'm not looking at earnings announcements, I would like to have my wide break-even points. I want my strikes pretty far out, and that's because I'm less concerned with the amount of credit I'm taking in and more concerned with my high probability of profit. Because at the end of the day, like we talked about in a previous Mike and his whiteboard episode for number of occurrences, if I've got a lot of high probability trades, like 75 to 80%, and I've got a ton of occurrences, then I can start to realize those occurrence numbers and start to see those expected probabilities that I'm going to be expecting from placing those strategies. So for me, I like the chicken iron condor for earnings and the regular iron condor for non-earnings. Now that's not to say I won't use a regular iron condor for earnings announcements, but I'll usually lean toward the chicken iron condor side. So we've compared the regular iron condor and the chicken. Now let's break away and do some takeaways for the chicken iron condor. So, the first takeaway is that it's similar to an iron condor, but closer to the stock price. So, it is much more narrow in terms of strike selection, but we do collect a larger premium, so it offsets that lower probability of profit. 
Also, the larger credit we receive, the lower max loss there will be. And that's because if the stock price blows all the way to the upside or to the downside, if I have to purchase that spread back for the full intrinsic value, the more credit I originally received, the more I'll be able to offset that max loss. And also, the larger credit is going to equal generally a lower pop. So unlike the straddle or strangle, which is undefined risk, where I can pretty much collect a larger credit with a straddle and have those wide break-evens that are very similar to a strangle, I'm gonna have to buy the wings on a chicken iron condor or an iron condor. So usually when I'm collecting a larger credit, it's going to equate to a lower pop when I'm talking about chicken iron condors and regular iron condors. And last but not least, I love the chicken iron condor for earnings strategies because of the fact that if the stock does explode outside of the expected move, I've collected a larger amount to offset my max loss. And if it stays within the expected move, I'm going to get paid more than if I were to have placed a regular iron condor. So this has been Chicken Iron Condors. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We're done for this week, but next week we're gonna talk about why we sell premium as opposed to buy it. So it's gonna be a great segment. That's gonna be on Tuesday at 3.15. If you've got any questions or feedback at all, shoot me an email at support at dough.com, support at or you can tweet us at dough trading, at dough trader Mike. And until next week, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Click below to watch more videos, subscribe to our channel, or go to 